Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Electronic Circuits, lecture number 20. Uh, today we are going to solve a numerical on Darlington pair amplifier. So let's start. So a two-state circuit is shown below with BJD parameters beta 1, beta 2 given as 100. VB1 and VB2 is given as 0 0.7. And uh, we are supposed to calculate the DC parameters, input resistance, output resistance, voltage gain, and the current gain of the circuit. So let's look at the circuit over here. Yeah. So it's a confirmation. It's a emitter follower amplifier employing a Darlington pair. Let me highlight the Darlington pair for you all. So uh, this is my Darlington pair. This is the Darlington pair transistor. And what's the feature of the Darlington pair? It's ha it has a very high current gain. Right uh, here, the values of resistor R1, R2, RE is given. Also, the value of the capacitor, uh, I think CC1 value is around uh, uh, one microfarad. Yeah, we have given V in, there is no R6. And the CC2 value is the output coupling capacitor, its value is 10 microfarad. Anyways, uh, these values of capacitors are not so useful right now for the current uh, requirement. So here we have written beta 1, beta 2 as 100, VB1, VB2 as 0.7. Now, first we have to calculate the DC parameters. That means we have to calculate the various terminal currents uh, and the voltages. So let us start with the solution. So first we'll apply the DC analysis and uh, find out the values of the DC parameters of the circuit. So let me write first DC analysis. So what's the requirement for DC analysis? The requirement for DC analysis is that all the capacitors in the circuit will be behaving as an open circuit. So let's do that quickly. And let me draw only the uh, you know circuit without any capacitors connected. So here is my circuit. So here we have the two transistors which are connected in the Darlington pair mode. Right? Their collector terminals are tied together over here. Then we have two resistors, one resistor over here, another over here, and we have RE resistance also. So only this much circuit we have to analyze for the DC analysis part. For AC analysis, we have to replace the uh, BJT by its hybrid pair model. So this is VCC, this is R1, R2, and uh, this is transistor Q1, this is transistor Q2. Let me mark the terminals also. This is, uh, let me use a red color. This is base one. Collector one and collector two are tied to VCC. Then this is emitter one, which is same as base two. All right, this is very important. And this is emitter two. And here this resistance is RE. Now, during the last lecture only, we have completed the DC analysis and the AC analysis of uh, you know, emitter follower amplifier using Darlington pair. So no need to repeat that. I will be showing you all the steps. Uh, but only one thing over here, we can write VBE. The total VBE of the Darlington pair will be here, from year to year. And this total VBE will be individual transistor based to emitter voltage. So it will be VBE1 plus VBE2. Right, And also since both the transistors are symmetric, their beta one is equal to beta two is equal to beta. That also we noted down. Now uh, let's revisit uh, last lecture that is 19.2. That is uh, emitter follow amplifier using Darlington pair. This was the amplifier given. Remember in, in this case, uh, the value of R sig is present. So we have to modify the formula accordingly, whether it's a AC or DC analysis, the, uh, because we don't have RSIG requirement in our numerical, fine? So we did the DC analysis. This is a revision. We have already done this. You all can refer the previous lecture. So for DC analysis, we open circuit all connected capacitors and we got this uh, circuit with, in front of us. Then what we do is, then we did apply the Thevenin's equivalent, Thevenin's equivalent at the base terminal of Q1. And this is how the circuit reduced now. We have evidence equivalent voltage, RTH, VTH. Then the yellow color marking over here is for the KVL to the input loop. That is base emitter loop. 
and the green color kvl is at the kvl at the output loop that is collector emitter loop assuming that q1 and q2 are matched your vb1 and vb2 are same and beta1 and beta2 are same so no need, no need to derive this your vb is vb1 plus vb2 we have already seen that rth value is r1 parallel to r2 vth value is r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into vcc we have already derived that and the base current ib1 value will be vb vth minus vbe upon rth plus 1 plus beta square times re so note the changes and here vbe is not 0.7 it is vbe plus vbe2 vbe1 plus vbe2 that will be 1.4 if vbe is 0.7 and then the value of ve2 so over here if i mark a uh, voltage like this so this is uh, ve2 your current flows right so that current will be ie2 so ve2 will be re into ie2 all right and also your ve1 is same as your vb2 voltage all right and your vc1 and vc2 voltage are equal to vcc okay fine so let's proceed with this uh, knowledge of dc analysis for our numerical so in our numerical no need to apply that analysis again we will directly calculate the value of rth vth and iv1 so rth is r1 parallel to r2 so keep your calculators in handy that will be very useful and uh, here we'll substitute the values of r1 and r2 so here the value of r1 is given as around 100k and the value of r2 is 50k so 50k parallel to uh, 100k will give you around 33.33 kilo ohms so let me highlight this value yeah so we got the value of rth now next is we calculate the value of vth so vth will be given by r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into vcc all right let's check it out how much is the value of vcc vcc is 10 volt and uh, your vcc value is 10 volt your r1 value is 100k and r2 value is 50k so substitute this values in the calculator and uh, you will get the value of vth as close to 3.333 volt all right so that's the value of the thevenin's equivalent voltage now next we calculate the value of vib1 which we have seen over here while revisiting your previous topic of dc analysis vth minus vb upon rth plus 1 plus beta the whole square divided into re so let's write that expression and uh, find out the other things so this is ib1 so ib1 is equal to vth minus vbe divided by rth plus 1 plus beta time uh, i mean 1 plus beta the whole square times re all right so here the value of vth is 3.333 the vb value is 1.4 why it is 1.4 because vbe is vb1 plus vb2 and these values are 0.7 right so vb total vb will be 0.7 plus 0.7 that is 1.4 okay i hope that is clear and the uh, value of rth we just now calculated it's 33.33 kilo ohms and then the value of beta which is 100 so it will be 101 square and re value is given as around 1k so if you substitute all these values in the calculator you should get ib1 close to 0.1889 microamperes so please cross check this answer if you get any other answer than this please reply in the comment section okay so now we got the value of uh, ib1 next we have to calculate let us look at it okay so next we have to calculate ic ic1 so how do we calculate ic1 let me write it down ic1 will be equal to just give me a moment yeah 
IC1 will be equal to beta1 times IB1. Here the value of IB, uh, I mean uh, beta1 is around 100 and IB value is 0 0.1889 microamperes. So your value of IC1 will be equal to 0 0.01889 milliamperes so that will be the value of ic1 let me highlight it i hope you are also getting the similar answers or close to it then next we find the value of ie1 all the terminal currents so the emitter current is the addition of the collector current plus the base current so in our case your base current is uh, let me add over here, this collector current is 0 0.01889 milli, and this is 0 0.1889 micro. So the overall answer IE1 will be close to uh, 0 0.01908 milliamperes. So as you can see, it is very close to IC1 value only. Your IE1 value is very, very close to IC1. Now let's go back to the diagram over here, right? So what do you see over here is that IE1 is same as IB2, all right? So let's do that. Let's write that down. So your terminal current IE1 is equal to, I mean, we can write IB2 is equal to IE1 which will be equal to 0 0.01908 milliamperes. So that's the value of the base current for the second transistor. Okay, then uh, similarly, we can calculate the value of uh, IC2. So IC2 will be beta two times IB2. Your beta two value is 100 and IB2 value is over here. And uh, so you can easily calculate this. Uh, IC2 value will be one point nine zero eight milliamperes all right so we have calculated all the terminal currents except for ie2 so let's also calculate ie2 so here it is ie2 will be equal to ic2 plus ib2 so your ic2 value is uh, 1.9 Zero 08 milli and IB2 value is 0 0.01908 milli. So the addition will give you the answer as 1.927 milliamperes. So please cross check this answer once. So your emitter current is coming out to be 1.927 milliamperes. All right. So this was point number eight. Now, next, uh, we can calculate the value of VE2. So let me go back over here to the circuit. So what will be the value of VE2? So your VE2 value will be IE2 into RE, right? So let's calculate the value of VE2. VE2 value will be IE2 into RE. So what is the value of IE2? We just now calculated 1.927 milli and the value of RE is 1K. So your value of VE2 will be equal to 1.927 volt. Okay, so that's the value of VE2 voltage which you get. Then let's go back to the circuit and calculate uh, other voltages, terminal voltages. So we calculated the value of VTH uh, I mean to say VB1, that is VTH is the same as your VB1. And then we calculated the value of, uh, you know, your VB, I mean VE1 and your VB2 are same, right? So we have to calculate that, how much is that? And also VE2 we calculated, okay? So your VC1 and VC2, yeah, here it is. VC1 and VC2 will be equal to VCC, but those are the same things. And uh, here we calculated the value of VTH. We calculated the value of uh, VE2. So we can easily calculate the value of uh, you know, VE1 or VB2. 
Okay. So yeah, let's proceed forward. So now let's calculate the value of VC1, which will be equal to VC2, which will be equal to VCC, which is 10 volt. Pretty simple. Straightforward. All right. Now uh, let's calculate the value of now VBE1. I mean, we can calculate VBE2 also. So VBE2, we know it is 0.7, but that VBE2 is equal to VBE2 minus VE2. Okay. And the value of VE2 is 1.927 volt. All right. So what will be the value of VB2? So VB2 will be equal to, we can take this, this side only. So it will be VBE2 plus VE2. All right. This will be 0.7. Yeah, VB2 will be VBE2, that is 0.7 plus 1.927 volt. So what is the value of VB2 now? It is around 2.5. 6 to 7 volt. All right. And is this value equal to something else? Yes. VB2 value is indeed equal to VE1. Here it is. VB2 value is equal to VE1. All right. So I will write it as this value is equal to VE1. So hence we calculated all the DC parameters of the circuit. Let me revise and write it over here. So what all DC parameters of the circuit which we found out for both the transistors? Basically we found out terminal currents in the form of VB1. Then we found out the value of uh, VB2 followed by VE1, VE2, then VC1 and VC2. And also we calculated the value of IB1, IB2, all the terminal currents, then IC1, IC2, then IE1 and IE2. So we have calculated all these DC voltage parameters, terminal currents and terminal voltages, right? So that's the first part of the circuit. Now, next we have to calculate the small signal parameters that's the second part so we'll write second and we'll calculate small signal parameters okay so let me uh, adjust the screen now yeah so we have to calculate r pi 1 and r pi 2 so r pi 1 will be for what is the formula beta 1 into VT divided by IC1. Now, what's the value of beta? 100. What's VT value is? VT value is 26 millivolt, always. Always remember this. And what's the value of IC1 we calculated? 0 0.01889 milliamperes. Okay. So the value of R pi 1, if you substitute all the values in the calculator, you will get it as close to 137. 0.64 kilo ohms. All right. So that's the value of R pi 1. Similarly, we have to calculate the value of R pi 2. So R pi 2 and R pi 1 will be different. Beta 2, Vt upon IC2. So beta is 100, Vt is 26 millivolt, and IC2 value is 1.90 seven milli okay so the value of uh, let me change the color to black it is r pi 2 will be equal to let me write it properly r pi 2 is coming out to be 1.362 kilo ohms yeah so that is the value of r pi 2 which we get okay all right uh next we could also calculate the value of gm but it is really not required for us right now right gm formula is also very simple ic upon vt but is not required now the third point over here is that now since early voltage since 
early voltage for BJT. Early voltage for BJT Q1 and Q2 is not mentioned, is not given. So what do we do? We assume the output resistance for both the uh, transistors, RO, I mean, Q1 and Q2, that is RO1 and RO2 will be assumed to be infinity. So that means they will not be present in the model. Yeah, so that is there. Then uh, next we go on and find the AC equivalent circuit. So let's start. Third part is AC analysis. No need to calculate GM, it is not required. Next we calculate, uh, I mean, the other parameters now, that is R in, R out, and everything else. So over here, we have to draw the mid frequency, which I'm not drawing right now. We have to draw the mid frequency, small signal, mid frequency, small signal, equivalent circuit. All right. So uh, actually this was covered in uh, AEC lecture uh, 19.2. So kindly draw that in your books, right? I am writing it down over here. Let me use uh, the black color to write it down. Kindly draw. Kindly draw it on your own. Own. And uh, we can write over here covered during AC lecture number 19.2, part two. So you all can refer it from there. We have to cover it, uh, draw it in your books, the mid frequency, small signal equivalent circuit. Now let me show it to you for your reference. Uh, let me revisit 19.2.2. So here it is. The AC analysis part I have written over here for reference, for your reference. Uh, here I have not shown the mid frequency small signal equivalent circuit. Please refer lecture number 19.2.2 for the AC equivalent circuit. Uh, mid frequency small signal equivalent circuit. So here we have written all the formulas for the input resistance so that we don't have to do this again. But in case you have forgotten any formula, you all can derive it very, very easily. So over here, input resistance R in, does this with the signal resistance. So wherever we have a signal resistance, that will be, uh, you know, zero, considered to be zero over here in this case, if it is in series. So we have to first calculate Ri2, which will be R pi 2 plus 1 plus beta 2 times Re. You can refer the previous lecture for this, how we got this formula. Then Ri1 is Ri2 into 1 plus beta 1 plus R pi 1. Then uh, the, that, that was the exact form. Approximated form of Ri1 was approximately equal to beta square times Re. The input resistance Ri will be R1 parallel to R2 parallel to Ri1. And uh, Rn is, was given by R, Ri plus R sig. So in our case, we have the value of R sig as 0. So in our case, Ri and Rn will be same, which will be R1 parallel to R2 parallel to Ri1. So these uh, things we have to note it down first. So let's first calculate the input resistance Rn. So let me go back over here or let me complete all the formulas first and then we'll come back to it. Then in order to calculate output resistance, we have to calculate RO1, which was R sig in parallel to R2, in parallel to R3, and uh, plus, and R sig was coming in parallel. Now, if it is coming in parallel, that resistance will be uh, that value because it is uh, not present. So it will be considered as an open circuit. Since you can refer the last lecture of how R sig was coming in parallel. So R sig is not there. So this term will be disappearing from here. Uh, there will be R1 parallel to R2 plus R pi one, the whole divided by one plus beta one. RO2 was RO1 plus R pi 2 divided by 1 plus beta 2. And finally, the output uh, resistance was RO2 parallel to RE. So this was the formula for R out output resistance. Next, we calculate the current gain. So current gain was the overall current gain. Its value is AI1. 
where AI one was one plus beta into AI two, which is one plus beta two, uh, into R one plus R two divided by R one plus R two plus R I one into R six divided by R six plus R I. So this term uh, won't be present because this will be zero. Okay, R I divided by R I R six plus R I. So this term won't be present at all. R six is not present, so that that's not to be. I think it is R I divided by R six plus R I. So you have to change that over here also. Yeah. So in this case, R six is zero. So this term, the third term, will disappear. This term will not be present. Okay, because R I divided by R six plus R I will be uh, one only because R six is zero. So this was the current uh, gain A I S, and uh, we have to also find the voltage gain. Total voltage gain will be A V one into A V two into R I divided by R I plus R six. So over here also we will get uh, the value of. Uh, Uh, wait a second. Yeah. Oh, sorry. In this formula, R sig is in the numerator only. It is R sig divided by. Yeah. So this will be zero only. This value of R sig will be zero. Let me mark it with a green color. This will be zero. So zero divided by zero plus a very large number. This will be very very small. So this term won't be present at all. All right. So yeah, let's uh, move forward. So let's calculate further. Yeah. Uh, basically, what was happening was this value of R six and this value of R six over here uh, was calculated as a part of it being in uh, in in parallel. Right. Let me show it to you once if it is visible. Yeah, let me go back to 19.2 lecture, and so why I am writing that R sig was uh, not equal to zero, but some other value. Yeah, so this is I think 19.2.1. Let me minimize it so that I can get the required. Uh, yeah, here it is the AC analysis part. It's loading slightly. Yeah, so let me go back and show it to you. How did we calculate it? That Yeah, this R sig upon R sig plus R I. How did we got in the first place? So here it is. Here the R sig was be considered to be behaving connected in 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 parallel. And whenever R sig is to be considered in parallel, it has to be. If it is not present, it has to be considered to be infinite. That is why in the above expression, R sig upon R sig plus R I, that should be infinite value. Let me mark it now. For the current numerical, let us go here. Again, okay. So, in this part, we'll substitute the value. We have done the revisiting over here, right? So over here, basically, while substituting the value of R sig, this R sig is not zero; it is infinite. Okay, this value is infinite. Here also, it's infinite. So that's why this term will not have any effect at all. This is very high value. This is infinite, and this is also infinite. So yeah, that will be gone. Infinite divided by that value will be gone. This term will not be affecting at all. And uh, finally, we calculate the voltage gain. That will be A V one into A V two. So in this case, your R sig is zero. Okay, this case it is zero. So R I upon R I will be one only, where A V one will be A I one into R I one divided by uh, I mean R into R I two divided by R I one, A V two will be A I two into R E divided by R I two. Okay, so now let's calculate everything now that we have discussed all the formulas. So let me go back over here, and uh, because uh, we didn't calculate the value of G M because it was not required at all. Now, first we start with the input resistance. So over here, first parameter which we will calculate is 
input resistance in the form of r in okay so let's calculate that now so first here we have to calculate uh, let me call it a point a because here i'll be using 1 and 2 and 3 this is 1 so this is ri first we calculate ri2 so what was the formula for ri2 r pi 2 plus 1 plus beta 2 times re so here we have to substitute the value of r pi 2 I think R pi two value was one point three six two seven kilohms. Beta two value is hundred, and R e value is one k. So if you substitute the values in the calculator, the value of R i two will come out to be hundred and two point three six kilohm. Yeah. So that's the value of uh, R i two. Next. we calculate the value of ri1 so what was the exact formula for ri1 it's ri2 into 1 plus beta1 plus r pi1 all right so your ri2 value we have calculated 102.36k then uh, this is around 101 r pi1 value is around 137.64k So if you plug in all the values in the calculator, we can see the value of uh, R I one will be ten point four seven megaohms. Its value is ten point four seven megaohms, which is very high. So that's why we say that the input resistance of offered by the Darlington pair is also very very high. Ten point four seven is a very high value of resistance. uh next we calculate the value of ri that is same as rn in our case so rn which is equal to ri which will be equal to r1 parallel to r2 parallel to ri1 so r1 is around 100k r2 is around 50k i think their product i think their combination was 33.33 value and this is around 10.47 mega so if you plug in all the values in the calculator your rn will be significantly dropping its value will be 33.22 kilo ohms so basically the biasing resistors r1 and r2 will reduce the input resistance of the amplifier including darlington pair as you can see it very clearly all right so we calculated the input resistance its value is 33.22 kilohms next we calculate uh, output resistance let me write over here okay yeah sorry for that so output resistance we have just now seen the formulas output resistance r out so for it we have to first calculate the value of uh, i think r o1 which was r1 parallel to r2 plus r pi 1 divided by 1 plus beta 1 yeah that's the value so here 1 plus beta 1 is 101 R pi one value is coming out to be uh, how much is the value of R pi one one thirty seven one thirty seven point six four k and R one parallel to R two value is coming out to be thirty uh, three yeah thirty three point three three k let me make sure of it R one parallel to R two is thirty three somewhere it is calculated. Yeah, while calculating the value of R T H, yes, correct. Yeah, this thirty three point three three kilohms. So let us go back uh, to our case now. Okay. Yeah. 
So R1 parallel to R2 is 33 kilo ohms plus 137.64 K divided by 101. So in that case, your value of uh, R01 is coming out to be 1.693 kilo ohms. So that is the value of R01. And uh, next we calculate the value of R02. I think let me mark this. Now then let us calculate the value of RO2. If you are finding it difficult to, you know, how we are writing these equations so easily, we'll have to re refer the previous lecture, 19.2.2. AEC session 19.2.2. So over here, the value of RO2 is 1.693K and value of RE is 1K. So the resultant value of RO2 will come out to be uh, 30. Yeah, oh, sorry for that. Very sorry for that. Uh, this is not correct. The formula is not correct. Let me use a eraser. Yeah. Yeah, the formula for RO2 is RO1 plus r pi 2 divided by 1 plus beta 2. All right. Your denominator will be 101 because beta 2 is 100. RO2 value, we just now calculated 1.693K. And RO2 value is uh, 1.3627K. OK. So if we solve this in the calculator, you will get the value of RO2 as 30.25 ohms, all right? And 30.25 ohms, it's a very low value. So here I can write, it's very low, all right? And at the last, we'll calculate the output resistance of the circuit. So output resistance of the circuit, that is R out, will be given by RO2 parallel to RE. And RO2 value is how much? 30 point, 30.25 and RE value is one kilo ohms. So the resultant also will be close to 30 ohms only. Okay. So R out will come out to be uh, 29.366. Again, it's a very low value. So that means uh, emitter follower amplifier using Darlington pair has a very low output resistance. Its value is very, very low. Okay, so these equations are giving a lot of insight into the understanding of this uh, Darlington pair amplifier. Uh, okay, now next we calculate the uh, current gain. So C part will calculate the current gain. So current gain will be given by A I S. Fine. So let's calculate AIS. Now AIS, uh, we have already discussed about the formula of the current gain. So let us quickly calculate this. So current gain will be AIS, which will be AI1 into AI2 into R1 parallel to R2 divided by R1 parallel to R2 plus RI1. So this is the formula. And what is AI1? 1 plus beta 1. So this is around 101. AI2 is also uh, around 101. R1 parallel to R2 is 33.33K. And RI1 value was how much? I think it's 10.47 mega ohm. This again is 33.33K. So 101 into 101 into this fraction. All right. So that will give you. So these two, if you multiply, you are getting a gain as 10201. Okay. So that's the gain of the Darlington pair. Its gain, current gain is 10,201. All right. That much higher. But as soon as we connect the biasing registers R1 parallel to R2, the overall gain will fall. So 
So what is the new value of AIS? So the value of AIS is coming out to be 32.35. So as you can see a drastic fall in the current gain of Darlington pair amplifier when we connect with the biasing resistors R1 and R2. Now, finally, we have to calculate the voltage gain. So last point, voltage gain A, V, T. So in our case, we have identified the voltage gain formula uh, just some moments ago. So it was given by, let me add it, uh, use a black color here, A, V, T was given by AV1 into AV2, where AV1 was coming out to be, what was the expression for AV1? AI1 into RI2 divided by RI1. So what was the value of AI1? This is 101, AI1, RI2, let me write it properly. This is RI2. Its value was around 102, 102.36, and RI1 value was 10.47 mega ohm. So, if you calculate this in the calculator, your value of AV1 will be approximately equal to 0 0.9737. Very, very close to 1, but not equal to 1 actually. All right, now let's calculate the value of AV2. Let me slightly move down. Okay, so third point will be calculation of AV2. So AV2 expression as we discussed was given by AI2 into RE divided by RI2. So what was the value of AI2, 101? RE value is how much? Its value is 1 kilo ohm and RI2 value is 102.36. So if you plug in all the values in the calculator, you will you should get AV2 approximately equal to uh, 0 0.986. 0 0.986. Let me confirm. Yeah, it is 0 0.986. And then the total gain, okay, sorry for this. Uh, the total gain, let me just rub this out. Yeah. Your total gain is uh, given by AV1 into AV2. And that if you multiply, that is coming out to be uh, close to 0 0.9737. So that's the voltage gain for a Darlington pair. It is around less than unity. And that is true. For emitter follower amplifier, the gain is uh, around close to unity. Let me use a red color. Gain, voltage gain close to unity. Okay, that is what we expect from the Darlington pair amplifier. Now, uh, following are the observations from the numerical. So let me add the observations over here because we have the numbers with us right now. So we can make the following observations. Observations for emitter follower amplifier or we can say Darlington pair amplifier, emitter follower amplifier using Darlington pair. So what is the observation number one? Darlington pair. Okay, so let us list the observations over here. The uh, current gain basically, the current gain, which was given by AI, which is actually equal to AI1 into AI2 of Darlington pair is very, very high. So this value is very, very high. Okay. Second observation is that it has high value of RN. 
if we calculate the value of ri for darlington pair right only for darlington pair or for this amplifier for that matter also the rn value is very very high let me slightly move above okay and uh, next high input impedance it has then it has around unity voltage gain so yeah unity voltage gain as we calculate as we found out that from our analysis that the overall voltage gain is very very close to unity okay so av is slightly less than or equal to unity and the fourth point over here is that it has very low output resistance very low output resistance so these are the features of emitter follower amplifier using darlington pair and uh, with this we conclude this session so we have solved a numerical on emitter follower amplifier using darlington pair and found out the voltage gain uh, the current gain the output resistance the input resistance value and uh, finally the uh, the dc parameters of the circuit right the small signal parameters that is r pi 1 and r pi 2 no need to calculate gm and uh, finally the dc parameter circuit dc parameters of the circuit that is terminal current and terminal voltage were found out for the darlington i mean let me show you the main circuit now for this circuit which which i am showing you in front of your screens so we have calculated with did this since last uh, you know 30 to 40 minutes we calculated these parameters for such a simple circuit okay so be careful in the calculations uh, if this comes in the exam uh, please do it very very patiently uh, any one mistake will lead to all the other numerical part will be you know going wrong so yeah so that's it for today and uh, next time we will start with a new topic so until then have a good day and thank you